Hello everyone, Golden Nova here. Today's video is... Um... I don't really know how I feel about it. I mean, I'm glad to do a little birthday gift for my mod Captain Blitz, but his request is... Like... How do you even talk about Dragon Rulers now? It's hard to think of a core of cards that are so concise but so powerful and flexible that it's left an indelible legacy upon the game itself. Not only did they make for an impressive deck in their own right, they've been experimented with in decks from Mermails to Dragoonerties, all looking to get a taste of their magnificence. And while the law Yu-Gi-Oh will swear up and down that Dragon Ruler format was not one of the game's first Tier Zero strategies, Legend often overwrites reality. And today, we're going to tackle that legend as best we can. Get ready to step into a new world of power where light and dark hold no sway. It's time for Dragon Rulers Explained. Before we start the episode, Dueling Nexus has launched a makeship campaign this month for the Nyx Fumo plushie. Gaze into her glorious visage, her dueling prowess, her stare that betrays a head emptier than any void. We've got until the end of the month to fund this thing, so don't delay. Not only does purchasing this get you a ton of freebies on Dueling Nexus, including credits, contributor time, and rarity tokens, all profits are being donated to Community Forests International, a nonprofit organization focused on restoring forests in places like Canada, Zanzibar, bar and Mozambique. Get a cute plushie to add to your collection and help fund a good cause all at the same time. Thank you all so much for your time and now back to the video. So what's the deal with the dragon rulers? Well they're a series of dragon type monsters and they come in two separate but equally important halves. The babies and the adults. They also have two separate identities. The Dragon Rulers are spread out across the four classical attributes, uh, all of them excluding Light and Dark, and, you know, Divine, and these monsters are built in such a way that you can either take one and play in a deck of its associated attribute to bolster their game plan, or play them all together alongside other Dragon Staples to form a powerful core. To start with, let's cover the Baby Rulers. These are Burner, Dragon Ruler of Sparks, a level 3 fire monster with 1000 attack and 200 defense, Lightning, Dragon Ruler of Drafts, a level 3 wind monster with 500 attack and 1800 defense, Reactin, a level 4 earth monster with 1800 attack and 1200 defense, and Stream, Dragon Ruler of Droplets, a level 4 water monster with 1600 attack and 2000 defense. Each one has a similar effect. You can discard this monster and either a dragon or a monster with its same attribute to special summon that baby's adult form directly from your deck. Blaster for Burner, Tempest for Lightning, Redox for Reactin, and Tidal for Stream, but the summoned monster can't attack that turn. Which is fine, using our big monsters as material first isn't too bad, because they've got a way to summon themselves as well. And by fueling your grave with those discards, you're setting yourself up for success. In fact, they make the cards so good that they would eventually have to be banned, though would eventually be freed and are currently back to being unlimited across the board, a potential sign that the Dragon Rulers may not be the format warping super threat they once were. But that's no excuse for going around doing it again. Your reckless disregard for throwing these into the grave for personal benefit means your future career as a babysitter is basically over. Don't worry, the Dino player is keeping your spot nice and warm for you. Next up, we have our Adult Rulers, all of whom are level 7, and all inexplicably have the combined stats of 4600. Blaster, Dragon Ruler of Infernos, is a fire monster with 2800 attack and 1800 defense. Redox, Dragon Ruler of Boulders, is an earth monster with 1600 attack and 3000 defense. Tempest, Dragon Ruler of Storms, is a wind monster with 2400 attack and 2200 defense. And lastly is Tidal, Dragon Ruler of Waterfalls, a water monster with 2600 attack and 2000 defense. Each of them come with four effects, all of which are mutually exclusive, so you can only use one of them each per turn. The first is, if it's in your hand or grave, you can banish a total of two dragons and or monsters that share its attribute from your hand and or grave, except itself, to special summon this card. During your opponent's end phase, if they're special summoned, you return them to the hand. If banished, you can add a dragon monster of its same attribute from your deck to your hand. And lastly, you can discard them alongside a monster that shares an attribute with them for a special effect unique to them. Blaster targets a card on the field and destroys that target. Redox targets a monster in your graveyard and special summons it. Tempest adds a dragon monster from your deck to your hand. And Tidal sends a monster from your deck to the grave. Now, while each of these effects shuts you off from the others for that turn, across four different dragon rulers, they interlock into a series of effects that get out of control really fast. 
For instance, if you banish Redox and Tidal to Special Summon Blaster, you now get to add an Earth and Water Dragon monster from your deck to your hand while fielding a massive beastie. In fact, some decks would run Mythic Tree and Mythic Water Dragons for exactly this scenario, because they added a little extra rank 8 flavoring to a deck that otherwise excelled at making rank 7s. The baby rulers can easily pitch the adult rulers from the hand to summon another adult ruler, and that would pair with the blaster we summoned to make that rank 7. And now we have two more material engraved to fuel our ruler summons. And if the ruler we summoned was Tempest, it hasn't even used its effect yet. So if you detach it, you can banish some more material from your grave to summon it back. For a time, these cards would become so notorious that banning was the only way to curb their toxic influence on the game. But slowly, these rulers are beginning to return, with all but one of them being limited, that being title, and I wouldn't count on it being forbidden for much longer. Now, I'm just a little guy, a goofy goblin, a tiny sprig amongst a forest of knowledge, so to go into every nuance of these cards across the formats they impacted is something I'm not equipped to teach you. So I'm gonna have links that you can follow in the description to other creators that have made more in-depth dives into what is commonly referred to as the most skill-testing format in the game's history. And if that doesn't rule, then I don't know what does. Now, until recently, that's where this section would just end. But one of the reasons I wanted to hold off on making this episode was a V-Jump promo released about six months ago at time of writing that hints at a new age of dragon rulers, and why some of them are returning to playability. Blaze, the Supreme Ruler of Dragons, is a rank 7 Fire Dragon Xyz monster with 2800 attack and 1800 defense, requiring any two level 7 monsters as a material. Once per turn, you can attach a material from this card to destroy a card in your hand or field, and a card your opponent controls. You can banish two dragon and or fire monsters from your hand and or grave to special summon this card from your grave, but return it to the extra deck when it leaves the field. So we get a repeatable blaster destruction effect, and can even revive itself like a dragon ruler, making this a top-notch option to overlay your dragons into. And while it will revive with no material, it's only a matter of time before it goes back to the extra deck to be summoned again in full. But if anything, this has just left me wanting more. Here's hoping this video prompts the emergence of the Supreme Rulers so they can hopefully set the dueling world ablaze once again. Alright, so that's all the Dragon Ruler cards, but I'm starting page 3 of this script right now, and there is no way we're hitting mid-roll like this. Thankfully, while they don't directly support the theme, there are a few spells and traps that feature artwork of the rulers, as well as effects that are tangentially related, so we'll take some time to cover those as well. Dragoroar is a quick play spell card that banishes one Earth, Water, Fire, and Wind monster from your grave to shuffle a card on the field into the deck. So if you banish all the adult rulers, you're walking away with a huge chunk of card advantage by way of searching, and you get rid of a free card to boot. Though the chances of you having all those rulers in the grave at the same time seems pretty low. You'll be trying to use them as much as possible on your own turn, so they won't have time to stick around in your grave. More than likely, you'll be banishing the baby rulers to accomplish this. But that still seems unlikely, as they make for great resources to fuel other effects. They can't be sticking around waiting for a single quick play spell to remove a single card on the field. Maybe some other theme will crop up in the future that also runs the gamut of these elements, fills the grave, and doesn't mind banishing, so if that day ever comes, we can invite this card back for that theme's tech pick section. For now, I'm just going to be floored by the confirmation that Redox actually flies. Storm Dragon's Return is a normal trap card that targets a banished monster and special summons it to your field, but returns it to the hand during the end phase. Sounds pretty familiar, huh? So yeah, this is indicative of the general Dragon Ruler effects, but this one is specifically made to reference Tempest's unbanning. To set up a bit of a timetable here, Tempest became legal again in the OCG in April of 2019, but Raging Rampage, the set this card released in, dropped in July of 2019. And I'm pretty sure the development time for new cards is more than three months, so they've been cooking on this for a while. Also, I'm a big fan that they use the Different Dimension portal that's seen on cards like Different Dimension Fusion and Different Dimension Reincarnation. That bright blue swirly is vastly underutilized. Nowadays, people are just opening up dimensional fissure-style holes, and that's just so passe now after all the Alabaz lore. Also, when are we getting versions of this for all the cards? Blaster and Redox are back too, you know. Dragon Carnation is a normal trap card that targets one of your banished dragon monsters and adds it back to your hand. And if there's a type that loves banishing, it's dragons. Even outside of the dragon rulers, we've got Chaos Ruler banishing lights and darks to bring itself back when it's not also being banned. Hello, Master Duel. Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon banishing a monster for its summon. Wyver Burster and Collapse Serpent are, well, them. Really, 
you can just throw a rock and you're bound to stumble on Dragon Link's next big workhorse. And while we don't see any rulers in this picture, we've actually gotten direct confirmation that this is, in fact, the Dragon Rulers reincarnating into their baby forms, as confirmed by the Gagaga -ga -ga Academy Tospedia. Look, even the locations of the lights match up to their environments. But functionally, it's a nice recovery tool, but we've gotten way more options that interact with the banishment quicker and more efficiently. So I don't expect this will get any representation in deck lists anytime soon. And like, by its very nature, turning back into your baby forms is pretty immature, right? I wouldn't be caught dead with this card. Alright, so that's all the Dragon Ruler and Dragon Ruler adjacent cards, and we don't really need anything to help them out, because the cards can't really be played in a dedicated deck. While we now have full access to the babies, we only have a single copy of three of our adults, so you're really only using these as tech cards in other decks. So what I'd like to do is take a bit of time to cover how they help with dragons in general, as well as some ways in which the individual dragons can help other decks. As far as dragon decks are concerned, having free level 7 material is fantastic. With level 1 tuners, you gain access to strong level 8 synchros like Excel Synchro Stardust Dragon, Borlode Savage Dragon, Draco Berserker of the Tenyi, and especially Psy Frame Lord Omega to get back your banished dragons. But the level 10 synchros are where it's at. If you're running some lighter dark monsters, Bestial Dispater has a lot of application, Barone is always a solid pick, and with all the banishing you're doing yourself, Sword Soul Supreme Sovereign Chung Ying can put in some work. As for the tuners you need to make these, Emergency Teleport is always a good pick if you splash in some punks, but I think having your tuners be dragons so we can search them would be best. Thankfully, Flamvel Guard is there to cover our fire bases, while Dragoonerdies have a variety of level 1 and 3 tuners you can nab off of Tempest's Banish. If we grab multiple level 7s, Mecha Phantom Beast Draco Sack was a classic choice, providing removal and free tokens, and that's only gotten better as Link monsters were introduced. A obligatory reminder that the two level 3 tokens make the Cherubini Burning Abyss Link. But now you can also take a token and turn it into Link Spider, and bam, that's an SP Little Knight right there. Big Eye is also another classic, stealing monsters is always pretty strong, but a funny one is X Pearly Happiness, because the effect that skill drains your opponent's monsters doesn't require the level 1 pearly at all, it just becomes unrespondable if it has one. And of course, there's a number of Link monsters you can make with these, really, as long as you have surplus dragons in grave, you've got access to some pretty snazzy extra deck monsters. Oh, and as far as the number 7 goes, Sacred Sword of 7 Stars was a popular pick, because as mentioned earlier, banishing your adult rulers is a great way to get some extra value out of that search, so attaching that to a draw 2 was pretty sweet. But an even sweeter card was Super Rejuvenation. It draws you a number of cards during your end phase equal to the amount of dragons you tributed and discarded that turn. And because it doesn't say at the beginning of the end phase, if you draw Super Rejuve off of another one, you can immediately activate it to draw even more cards. But, uh, you did still have to discard down to six, so you wouldn't want to go too bonkers with it. Now let's talk about the individual rulers. Tempest is probably the hardest to separate from dragon-specific decks since its discard effect adds other dragons from your deck to your hand. But it does require a wind monster to activate, so what's the best deck to work with them? And honestly, you probably already know it. Dragoonerdies are a prime example that we've mentioned before, and another really good one is Armed Dragons, specifically of the Thunder variety. Since so many of them have effects that trigger when sent to the grave to activate the effect of a dragon monster, you get a little extra value from your dragon rota. But my favorite has got to be Harpy Ladies. Not only does it have that little bit of synergy with Harpy Chandler to give you access to those rank 7 plays, it can also search out the Harpy's latest pet dragon, Fearsome Fire Blast. Also, it's a little fun in speed roids. Give it a level 3 tuner from the theme, and that's a high speed roid kite drake right there. Next up, we've got Blaster. Now, you'd think during the Year of Fire, there'd be a ton of decks looking to get a piece of the Dragon Ruler pie. But as it turns out, their engines have been so tuned up that Blaster would actually get in the way. I can't think of a single time in which Snake Eye would ever want to see a Blaster in their opener instead of literally anything else. But a deck I think has the best chance to utilize it is Volcanics. Partly because it's free material to help you link climb, but also because banishing more pyros means more burn from Volcanic Emperor. For Redox, well, that can be played in a lot of stuff. 
Turns out Earth is a pretty common attribute. Amazonist, Magnet Warrior, Desk Bots, but the one I like best is Madolce. They have so many great cards to bring back from Angeli to Hoot Cake, and having another card that both helps to fill the grave and empty it is pretty swell, especially since we're also definitely running some mana of Vernisylphs. Lastly, we have the still banned title, and because it's a foolish burial, it's hard to argue with that decision. But the big deck that this works with is the Mermail Pile. Not only does it line up with the variety of level 7 monsters they have, they also use a lot of Atlanteans, who trigger their effects when sent to the grave to activate water monster effects. So if you discard an Atlantean for the Foolish Burial effect, you get the Atlantean's effect too. Though another play sequence would be pitching Tidal for another monster's effect, then banishing all the chaff you sent to the grave to bring back Tidal to get you material for a rank 7 Xyz summon. Alright, so that's all the info I have on Dragon Rulers, but how do they stack up against the Nova Scale? Novelty. If you've been watching these segments for a while, you'll know that I give a lot of weight towards cards that coin particular community phrases. It's a testament to their lasting effect on the game. Huge batches of cards are being released every few months, but very few are immortalized in this manner. So when you have a monster that can be summoned by banishing others to fuel their effect, we call those Dragon Rulers. So they're getting a 5 in Novelty. Objectivity. This is one of those scores that have been softened by time. Tier 0 or no, the theme was so dominant that it felt like it. But now, they've been relegated to utility slots in other decks, serving some funny purpose or another. This may change with a few unfortunate unlimits, but it seems the devs are content to bring the adults to one and do nothing else. At least not until some future time where the game is warped to a point where even full power dragon rulers wouldn't make you bat an eye. So for the off chance they come back and start causing some problems, dragon rulers get a 4 in objectivity. Versatility. Being useful to 4 out of the 7 attributes make the Divine Attribute Archetype Konami, as well as arguably the most supported and iconic type in the game, means you can see a lot of plays and a lot of themes. Maybe not everything, uh, the overwhelming lesson on most explains about older archetypes is that time is a relentless arrow that marches inexorably towards a future full of power creep and optimized engines, but their effects are always just useful enough in just the right ways that it's hard to imagine a world where they can be entirely written off. So Dragon Rulers get a 3 in versatility. Awesomeness. So despite everything we've gone over, I've got to ask, what do Dragon Rulers do? What's their identity? If the answer is, makes a lot of good extra deck monsters, great. It fills the role of just about every splashed theme in the entire game. Dragon Rulers, as a standalone concept, make big bodies and that's just kind of bland, right? A series of cards being effective doesn't always make them cool, and despite being a series of elementally charged dragons across several environments, I just can't muster the energy to get excited over them. And I'm someone who loves dragons! So dragon rulers get a 2 in awesomeness, which means they in total get a 14 out of 20 on the Nova scale. And that's all I have to say about Dragon Rulers. I hope upon hope that this video is the catalyst for the remaining Dragon Ruler Xyz monsters, and maybe an honest to goodness theme will emerge from the Elemental Ashes, and we can reevaluate what this theme is beyond one of the best enablers for other strategies. After all, if they're to truly take on their title of ruler, they can't be content serving others. I mean, that comes with the territory. You could even say it's one of the most important rules. But now, I want to hear what you all have to say. Do dragon rulers still rule the roost, or are they out of their elements? And which one's your favorite? I'm personally a fan of Redox, I'm getting a lot of Monster Hunter vibes from it. Let me know what your favorite is down below, and if you haven't already, please be sure to like the video if you liked it, subscribe so you don't miss the next episode, and share this video with somebody you know who loves Yu-Gi-Oh! It really does a lot to help me out. And of course, a big thank you goes out to Blitz for helping to mod everything over here for all these years. I really do appreciate all the effort that you've put in to making this community what it is. Today's episode is brought to you by my lovely patrons, as well as the lovely people over at Dragon Shield. Get the sleeves as strong as dragon scales and save 5% on your order by using the coupon code GOLDENNOVA at checkout. Today's episode was also brought to you by my lovely patrons, including this month's illustrious Quasar Commanders Sir Knight JCB and the Critic of Innocence, Nebula Navigator's Third Dynasty, Ada Basilisk, Adam Zagdell, Anansi Dragon, Andrew Newman, Kane Senpai, Christopher Fuss, Clockswork, Emini Chan, Eric, Aaron the World Breaker, Frankie, Garland Chaos, Green Knight, Gloomba331, Great Big Pillock, Groo!
Moog, Hair Bear, Harry the Ominous Benefactor, Howling Zangetsu, Iron Zero, Iskander 711, Carp, Mana Charge, Marion James E. Piccata, Mega Combi, Millennia Asta, Muzuki Clark, Nathan Vig, Natiel Lee Alexander, Orozco 09096, Panther J, Rebel King Lucifer, Red Eyes Jackalow, RJ the Jank Monarch, Sammy Haim, Serenity Towns, Sky Buster Leo, That One Dumbass and the Wizard Moose, Cosmic Crusaders Alpha Sly, Almento 5010, A Random Pup, Ariel Kersey, Berin Von Titty Sprinkles, Beluga Masta, Blitz Wolf, Blue Gem, Borger with a Shotgun, Callum McCann, Chaz Ghost, Childish Lamar, Dr. Reaper R.I.P., Drakenwald, Eki Bullock, Eva Padilla, Hike Boyajian, Herbal D, Ignis Heat the True Draco Slayer, In Blink, Jester Designs, Kale the Dragon, Kivon Public, King Scarlet Yu Gi Oh!, Lemon Yu Gi Oh!, Manga Pages, Marluxia is a Girl, Matt Simmons, Mick Spoofy, Michael Shimabukuro, Nitromo, Obsidian, Ramen Resurrect Chan, Shizuki Nijimura, Sophie, apparently, Stephen Williamson, Taylor Seymour, Terror Top to 3, The Legendary Raven, and Zeldreka, as well as the lovely Starlight Explorers you see on screen now. If you'd like to help me in my journey to cover all of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s archetypes, get my videos early, be a part of these credits and other awesome perks, it would mean the world to me if you checked out the link to my Patreon in the description or consider joining as a YouTube member. And if you'd like to see another video about one of the game's most iconic dragons, check out this gigantic video that features Stardust Dragon, You Say Explained. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye